Hello, welcome back. This video I'm going to be sleeping in my car and hiking up to Crooks Peak which is a really beautiful location overlooking western um, a little bit of uh, sort of seaside. I am staying in my car because I would love a van. Van life is the dream for me. I'm going to make do with what I've got. I've got an inflatable bed. I'm going to put down the seats, uh, get everything all cosy, wake up for sunrise which is 4.55. Hopefully we'll get some misty beautiful conditions in the morning. I've waited for conditions like this for a long time and the forecast says that it's going to be fog. I scoped out this location on the way to work one day. The sun was rising, there was velvety mist rolling through the farm fields and all over the, all over the hills. It was stunning, absolutely stunning and I thought I wish, I wish I was walking up that hill there and not going to work. Um, and I promised myself I'd come back here in hope that I might find those very conditions again. So uh, let's get to it, let's set up the bed and create car life <laughs> instead of van life. I use a walking app which is View Ranger. So this is where I am now. This is Crooks Peak. Um, and if I zoom in to the location I am now, just bear with me doing this with one hand. Um, I just want to see how many tracks go up. Um, I think I'm along here, um, which would make a lot of sense. So um, I've passed this one already, which is the lay-by. I mentioned to you guys and there's various tracks along here that seem to go to join this main one that leads all the way up to the top of Crooks Peak. So we're all set up for the night. It is really cosy. <laughs> yeah, I still have my Citroen C1 and it's the seats are down. This is my headrest and it's quite dark but it goes all the way back. Um, to the back of the car. I don't think I'll be able to stretch out long enough, but it will do. I'm here for sunrise, it doesn't matter. Car life so far, not working, <laughs> not working out to be as good as my van experience. It never will be. However, I'm here with a purpose. Comfort doesn't matter. Getting here for sunrise is all that counts. So I'm going to hit the hay and see you guys in the morning. Good morning, it is currently four in the morning. I set my alarm for half past three. Um, been awake for the last sort of 15 minutes and it's not looking like it's misty from where I am. The temptation is to head down to a little lay-by where there's a really good view over the valley um, and have a little look, but I'm not gonna do that because I think my motivation of thinking about that would be to see if it's uh, misty, is it worth hiking up? If it's not, don't bother, go home. Now, I don't know why my brain <laughs> automatically chooses an exit strategy, but I'm going up this hill, no matter what, even if there's mist, no mist, regardless, I'm doing it. Um, so yeah, last night's sleep was interesting. Uh, I managed to get a couple of hours actually, of quite a few hours, I think I've had about three hours, which is pretty good. Um, I am feeling tired, but uh, I'm excited to hit the track and see what the morning brings us. So I've had some breakfast, I've had a cup of tea, and all that's left now is just to get the kit together. myself wrong and the mist is here which I'm so grateful for. I'm just hiking up, I've got lots of kit, I've got my drone and I've got um, an extra tripod so don't 
definitely a fitness challenge as well. But yeah, super glad the mist is here. It just looks, looks incredible. We're almost at the top. I can see in front of me this beautiful, stunning light. The sun hasn't risen yet. I'm not quite at the top, but I can see patches of fog in this direction here. I can just about see it, almost at the top. We made it to the top. Words can't describe how awesome this is. It's just wicked. Really glad I came up. And never let those negative thoughts get the better of you. Um, Mist is here. And I almost gave up and I'm really glad that I didn't. Right, so I better move quickly. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about um, what I've seen um, in terms of shots. So I'm just going to turn you around. Uh, in front of me is a beautiful S-curve made by the mist. So let's have a look. So you've got a road that runs along here. I think it's the M5. And then you've got this nice curve that leads into some purpley pink clouds with blue sky which i think looks really cool um, you've also got this patch here which i think if i zoom in and do um some sort of tight long lens snaps i think that'd be quite nice some sort of square crop and um looking back this way um there's nice little patches and really good sky there i find if you look behind you If you look behind you at sunrise, um, sometimes the best light is actually behind you because it's less harsh. The sun rising here is really beautiful, but I know that when it rises, it's gonna be quite bright. Whereas when you've got this nice pinky hue, it makes for some really dreamy, soft images. So I'm gonna get the tripod out, get set up. But this is my first composition and it's nature's very own S-Bend. I have made a catastrophic error in packing my kit. <laughs> Why? Why has this happened to me? Oh. <sighs> my attachment that goes on the end here, I took out because I packed a different camera for a trip that um, never happened. I was gonna go to Dartmoor and I was gonna have my um, smaller lightweight camera. In doing so, I swapped over um, the attachment. Uh, when I was packing for this kit, I've swapped over the lenses knowing that I had a different lens on, but I didn't think about the uh, tripod mount. So that means I can't use the tripod, but it's fine. Luckily, these conditions don't require a tripod. I can just shoot um, with a higher shutter speed to keep it nice and steady. 
light so soft um, and dreamy so I think I should be okay but lesson learned second proper trip of this year <laughs> and I've forgotten the most important thing but hey we're all learning the sun is just rising now so I'm gonna frame up this one and uh, I'll turn you guys around so you can see my second shot <laughs> I've forgotten the most key part but anyway let's move on I've been taking a couple of shots of this S bend which curves around the road settings wise I am on 1 25th of a second the reason why I'm on 1 25th is because when you're handheld you want to get as little movement in the camera as possible so anything below 100th 125 you are going to get camera shake just because your hands will naturally move. As much as you try and stay still, um, it can be quite difficult to get a clean, um, sort of steady shot. If you can use objects, use a bag or use some rocks to help steady your camera, that's always a good little tip. And uh, ISO is 400, and the reason why is because I've had to um, add extra light. Because I'm handheld, I wouldn't use such a high ISO if I had a tripod, but because I'm handheld, I am going to have to use that as um, sort of my um, leeway to try and uh, get more light in the image. And settings um, that are left is my F number. So my F number is 6.3, and I'm dipping between that and 6. Point, um, and 5.6. Now, it's not ideal because I do like to be at a higher F number to get aperture throughout, but I have to make a sacrifice um, with the area I've made and I'm getting shot, so, you know, um, I'm able just to make compromises. So the mist is actually still changing as we speak. If I just turn you around, you can see that it's even thicker and denser than, than what it was a second ago. So um, to study you guys there. So the, the mist is constantly changing and compositions are going to be constantly changing. Um, so I'm going to finish off shooting this S-Bend here, move on to my second image, which is going to be getting out the longer lens and then zooming in and getting some really tight cropped images of the mist. Some of the trees, uh, the heads of the trees are poking out above, uh, above the mist and it's making some interesting compositions, uh, especially with the pylons too. It looks really moody and um, sublime. So yeah, it's pretty cool. getting chilly so I've got my long lens now so I can really go tight in uh, with a crop uh, pick out some compositions I've seen so many around me and it's really good to travel with an extra lens so you can change up your composition and turning around here you've got light coming in uh, directly in front of me which is hitting my face and it's really illuminating all of the foreground which it's making for some really good compositions. I think the wide angle lens seems to have captured that golden light a little bit better than what this will. But we'll give it a shot, see how the light changes and 
pick out just a few more compositions using a sort of a tighter, uh, cleaner uh, crop. So change up the settings and see how we're doing. Yeah, it's looking good. Looking good. Great lens to have. I feel like paparazzi shooting with this. Moving around uh, this top of this hill, there are compositions in every direction. And I'm trying to frame up one that is a little bit um, unique and using the light is um, a bit of my challenge this morning. So shooting into the sun is something I don't normally do. And I've composed a shot where you actually have the sun in the image, all of the light in the foreground and uh, the rolling mist um, beneath the hill. So I'm gonna put that one on the screen now. Let me know what you guys think of this one. If you have any other ways of approaching shooting into the sun, I don't normally do it. I often go for the kind of tranquil, sublime colors, um, anything that's too bright or oversaturated, I tend to steer away from. Not that I don't like that photography, it's just not my kind of style and everyone's got their own, their own um, personality and individuality with their uh, imagery. Let me know what you guys think of that one. Up ahead of me here, I'll just turn you guys around so you can see what I'm talking about. You have, the <laughs> apologies for the mic, getting in shots you have these little row of trees here which are almost like Spanish trees they're really long really tall beautiful trees um, using this is quite good because you can really crop in and walking up I saw these surrounded by mist and I was so tempted just to stop and take a couple of shots but I thought no I'm gonna miss the light if I don't get up the top of this hill so I missed that shot, but what's really good is once I'm up here, I can now look back at that composition that I was um, scouting out on the way up and I can now shoot it. So it's always good to um, bank compositions on your way up, scan around you as you're walking and uh, really take in all angles of where you are. More compositions will probably come to light as you hit the top. So that's what's kind of happened with this one. We'll see what the image looks like. If it's not very good, then I might not put it on the screen. Uh, we'll see how it turns out. <laughs> yeah, I like this. I think I'll share this one. angled up right. So the little pockets of light that I was talking to you guys about, uh, they're just sort of hitting everywhere. Now that I'm layered up because walking up here uh, it's quite warm and then you cool down and uh, you can get yourself quite cold so it's good to take, always take layers with you. That's a safety rule. 
Susie safety rule. Uh, before we go into this composition, I wanted to uh, just talk about last night and uh, my sleep and my plan to try and make my car into a van life. It's a car life. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was tough and I'd say uh, at least I'm trying with what I've got. I'm making the best of what I've got. I've got a small car. It's just so impractical, but cheap. And I've had it for about six years now and it's got low mileage and I'm reluctant to um, get a new one because it's just better for the environment to use what I've got until it's completely broken. But I am maintaining it and I'm looking to keep it. Um, but I often come to the thought of getting a van and I don't know if you guys have the same it's one of these dreams that uh, we all think um, will complete us or complete our photography. But then I come to realise that actually it's the effort you put in and it's putting yourself in the locations. You could sleep anywhere. You could sleep in a tent. Um, you could sleep in your car. But the hard bit is actually getting there. And I think a van in my mind is just an easier process, a more comfortable process. And I know that it will be. But actually the first hurdle is getting to the location and placing yourself there so you can take those shots. And that's, that's what I need to remember. So a van may happen soon, but it's not happening yet. And I'm gonna make do with what I've got, um, put the effort in to try and get to locations. If that means driving early hours of the morning, that means driving early hours of the morning or sleeping in my car or a tent, I really don't mind. The main thing is, is that I'm out shooting. So I thought you guys might find that interesting. Some of you that may idolize van life after going around Iceland, it's really made me uh, want to get one, but I have to remember that it's an expense involved and I'm yet to buy a house. So I think that's probably more important than buying a van, but some might disagree with that. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think. All right, let's get to this last shot because I'm rabbiting on. That is the end of this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Please stay tuned to any more of my videos. I'm going to try and film. I say this every video, but I am genuinely putting in the extra effort now that COVID's lifted. Woohoo! No more excuses, nothing to hold me back. Summer's here. Let's get to it. Let's get shooting. More videos to come. Massive thank you to everyone who has stuck with me and followed me so far. It really means a lot. It makes photography uh, really purposeful because when you're just shooting and not really sharing it, it kind of feels like there's no purpose to it. Whereas when you're sharing the images and you've got um, an audience or people that follow you or family and friends, uh, it can feel like uh, it's appreciated. So I'm here because I'm here for myself. You know, I want to be in nature. I want to capture nature. But the final cherry on the top is sharing it with people and connecting over a, a mutual interest. So. Thank you so much for following me and watching my videos and I'll see you guys in the next one, wherever that may be. Take care.